Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, welcome to your uh, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, timeless soulmate contract read. I am your reader, Mal, uh, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, sorry, professional witch. Professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch. Brilliant, brilliant piece of work, if I do say so myself. Available on Kindle, link in the description box. Uh, Patreon creator, I have my humans, my heroes, my immortals, my gods, my goddesses, and my witches over there having a field day, and the extended will be available there. Because I'm the Archangel of Lions, uh, Mark Angelo Lions, but you can call me Mal L of Krypton uh, today. Uh, hey, my Aqualungs, my Aquariums, very happy to be serving you today. Uh, avoid, of course, all day at the time of this recording, but we just got out of an Aquarius moon uh, and going into Pisces later tonight. Great fun. So, uh, yay for the Pisces moon in the room. Uh, so, uh, let's get up in this gig. It's a soulmate contract read. There are links in the description box, even a video that I did here for YouTube, a preface to the soulmate contract reads, what I mean by that, what I mean by soulmate, lots of other videos available down there too, uh, talking about twin flames and soulmates and soul contracts. So, uh, if you want to check it out, we are going to look at this like a contract, party number one, party number two, and uh, a center lane. Uh, we're getting you the foundation here in part one. Part two, the extended is available uh, on Vimeo.com, pay-per-view. Uh, but if you uh, sign up on uh, Patreon, any of the levels of subscription, you get all the extended readings, past, present, and future, because they are timeless. So, uh, let's get up in this gig. You're going to have to figure out which one you are here, whether you're party number one, party number two. It's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. You know that. Uh, uh, but you might also find a lot of mirroring going on. The foundation of a soulmate contract is that you help each other heal through the quantum entanglement and contract of a soulmate. In this case, a romantic a soulmate. Not all of them are uh, romantic. Uh, that's all in those videos uh, going deeper into that. Um, but you're helping each other heal. So even if you haven't met yet, when you do meet, you're like, oh my God, you went through that, I went through that, right? <laughs> even if it was at different times, you're helping each other heal. So uh, I guess that's about it, except to say both feet on the floor if you can, focus on your breath if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can on what I think are the most important at this phase in uh, human evolution on the spiritual path. Uh, the romantic ones are the hardest. Twin flame soulmate, they're all really hard. It's different than family. That doesn't mean family's not hard, though. So, uh, let's do this, shall we? Enough exploration. Let's get to divination. Please take a next deep breath. Oh, it's such a switch. It's really waiting to inhale. <laughs> get through all that explanation just to get to that. One more. Focus on your breath. Fixed air signs. Here we go. Using the Caroline Mace archetype deck, I call upon the collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of romantic soulmate contract law, and the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, for the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Uh, in this soul contract, give me the dominant eighth chakra archetype going on in this contract for party number one. Maybe it's the Aquarian, maybe it's not. How about uh, party number uh, two? Let's let's uh, let's let's look at that. Uh huh. And uh, state of the contract, uh, which will be the first card we turn over in the extended reading. So I won't even know what it is until we get there. Uh, yeah, state of the contract, the chapter of the book they're in, right? The track on the album that they're at, the clause in the contract, the scene in the movie. Where where is this contract? for the Aquarians in this timeless read. So I don't even know what that is until <laughs> I think I do the extended. But let's see uh, who's in the contract. 
Well, a detective and an exorcist. There you go. There you go. That sounds like a happy couple, but let's talk about it. There are nine different families of archetypes. The detective is the wisdom family. Uh, the exorcist, the divine family. Another name for the exorcist is the shaman, um, but that's got a lot of cult cultural stuff attached to it, different than monk and nun, right? That's all throughout different traditions called different things, but uh, the exorcist, I know, <laughs> pea soup, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about if you don't. Uh, a little Lin Linda Blair energy there, but it's a really powerful thing. So let's talk about this. What's written on the card is the shadow attribute and the light. The shadow is what you're helping each other heal. So the more you heal yours, the more it's healing theirs and vice versa. Uh, the light is what you are shooting for, right? That is the 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 wisdom, the, the healing, right? Uh, lead to gold, shadow to light, pain to peace, toxic to healthy. So let's talk about the detective. I have a touch of the detective. You can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or all of your life. Sacred Contracts, Carolyn Mace, brilliant book. Uh, the Shadow Attribute of the Detective, Voyeurism and Falsifying Information. It's Gladys Kravitz vibe, even though she actually did see what, <laughs> what she saw. Talk about gaslighting. Uh, uh, light Attribute, Great Powers of Observation and Intuition, Desire to Seek Out the Truth. So just because it's a wisdom family archetype doesn't mean it's all third eye. Right, the cute part of the little gray cells, right? I'm, uh, I'm an Agatha, hello, my name is Mark, I'm an Agatha Christie audiobook addict. Uh, uh, but the desire to seek out the truth, now, th that leads itself in romantic relationships to a whole other different thing. So whether you're, as we used to call it back in the 80s, scoping and probing, just stalking, right? It was not great, right? Uh, uh, voyeurism, that kind of stuff, not great. Now you can do it on the internet. Uh, but if there really is a following of the intuition here, powerful, powerfully wise, here we've got a divine family archetype, the exorcist, the shadow attribute, fear of facing your own demons. And I'm not talking about like ones that are written in books that you can name and on Charmed and elsewhere. I'm talking about your own shadow. That's why there is a very strong shamanic vibe here in terms of uh, the descent into the underworld, doing the shadow work, whatever cultural framework or psychological framework is very Jungian, forever young, uh, embracing the shadow, right? So fear of embracing your own demons, your own repressed stuff. Uh, and there's, uh, and you can name them if you like, uh, uh, but it's just lead waiting to be alchemized to gold. Just a, a, a demon that forgot it's an angel, <laughs> right? Needs more love, not less, but is not allowed to possess you and drive the show. Burn down the village. The light attribute, freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses. Now, like I said, you put these two together, this is a power couple. So whether you are together or not, it's a general read. You want a private read? Link in the description box, booking a reading with Mal. I've been reading people all over the world. It's a field day. But we have just begun. We've only just begun. Uh, on this side, we're going to use five of the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. To clarify, on this side, we're going to use five Mythic Tarot. Uh, uh, fire, Earth, Air, Water, Spirit, the Elements Spread. And in the extended reading, we flip decks. So this is going to be Heart, Third, Third Eye, Crown, the internal. So you could say the feminine side if you want to play that, the yin side. Uh, this will be Root, Sacrum, Solar, Plexus. You could say the yang side, the masculine energy. Uh, but it will be balanced out uh, in the extended because I want to give you a good bang for your buck. All right, please take a nice deep breath. Not to mention we go hard into Oracle Town in, uh, in uh, the extended. Here we go. All right, as I call upon my goddesses of air, the sign of Aquarius and uh, uh, powers of the east. Since that's such a strong air sign, the detective... And uh, the wisdom aspect, very, very key here, I'm feeling. What's their element of fire? This detective in this uh, Aquarian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, soulmate, contract. Their element of fire, what they yearn for, what they burn for, what their hearts desire is the Aquarian card. First tarot down. Daughters of the Moon literally writes the zodiac sign on it. Fixed air. The Eagle Woman, Ixchel, who is a shamanic goddess, right? Uh, uh, I-X-C-H-E-L, here seen as the Eagle Woman. She also has a very, very strong connection to Panthers. 
uh, uh, South American, we're just, let's just say South American continent vibe there. Although she's all over because the goddesses are everywhere. Uh, so what it is that they really want here is either the Aquarian, which suggests this one is the Aquarian, and that's going to be for a lot of people watching this. But if this is the Aquarian on this side, then this is about them. What they really want is their authenticity. They want to be that Aquarian. They want to be what? That fixed air. They want that 11th house to interact with the world with, you know, humanity, like humanitarianism and, you know, with groups and organizations and communication, but flying above it, right? Fixed air, the stratosphere, the satellite point of view, the larger picture, also ruled by Uranus. I know there's a joke there. Uh, uh, but which is the rebel, right? Which is the outside of the box thinker, the freaks of the zodiac. So let's let's keep going here. What's their element of earth, the fuel to feed the fire? To help them manifest their heart's desire. And this is the Pisces card. So if we're looking at a Pisces Aquarius relationship here, which there are more of those than than I can think of. I know a lot of uh, Aquarius Pisces things right next to each other in the zodiac, but fixed air and mutable water. They can both be very freaky in their own way. Remember, I have a Pisces moon, so I can speak for the Pisces aspect there. But this also talks about that intuition, right? Talked about in the detective here on this side. Now, I think more heart chakra intuition, um, but certainly that desire for truth is definitely an Aquarian thing, element of fire, but what they have to help them get that in this is to not just go with their emotions, which certainly is mutable water, shark and dolphin, you know, barracuda and guppy, <laughs> the, the Pisces schemata, uh, but to really kind of feel their way through this and feel through the emotion to the feeling of intuition, the guidance and the grace there. 12th house dynamic, the collective unconscious. All right, what's the element of air here? What's uh, this detective thinking about with those little gray cells about this soul contract with the exorcist? Ma'at, the justice card, they're definitely weighing it out. They're definitely weighing it out. And of course, with Ma'at, uh, the heart balancing with a feather, usually, I think it's an ostrich feather. It's Egyptian, right? Ostriches <laughs> are indigenous to Egypt. I don't know what the right word is. Please don't cancel me. Uh, uh, so it is, this is a thing of balancing the head and the heart. Now, this can also be about karma. This can also be about fairness and justice in that sense of this being done fairly from an egalitarian point of view. Uh, I would say definitely we've got a predominant element of error on this side, at least in the tarot. Let's keep going. What's the element of water? What uh, is this detective feeling about this? And we've got our second major arcana card on the table. Uh, the world, the universe, Shakti, the life dancer. Now, I do recommend Google searching or whatever search engine you use the word Shakti, because you're going to find more than just the name of a Hindu goddess. It's a whole energy, Shakti, and different forms of yoga, and Shakti pot, and, you know, it's a word that's used. So it is uh, the last card of the Major Arcana before it reboots at the Fool, and this deck is called the Dreamer. Um, so there is a completion of an emotional cycle here, which would make sense then with the mind balancing that, that uh, wanting to really see this from a more impersonal place mentally. Impersonal doesn't necessarily mean cold, but it can mean seeing it symbolically, putting together the clues, right? Uh, but going with the intuition. This definitely feels like a detective vibe on this side. So uh, what is the card of spirit, the point of view of the soul, who has chosen to play the role of the detective in this Aquarian collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus, sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, well, <laughs> sexual, sad, soul, soulmate contract with the exorcist is the Leo card, your opposite side. Now we've got three court cards here. We've got fixed air, mutable water, and fixed fire. When it's in the soul position and heart third, third eye crown, these are internal dynamics. Yes, they can be mirrored out into those signs in other people, but it's really about your own heart third, third eye crown. This is talking about the Leo energy of fixed fire. 
Um, complimentary opposite to Aquarius is Leo. Air and fire balance out lovely. It, fire can't be without air. But this is talking about your fifth house dynamic. Creativity, good fortune, pleasure, fun, the Leo stuff, right? Uh, the, that, that beauty, that bright, that creative. And, and this is why here we have Shantiko, uh, the mother of flame. So this would be the, um, oh, by the way, this would be Aquarius. This would be the uh, queen of, uh, of swords, even though it is called the crone of blades. Uh, this would be the Knight of Pentacles, even though it is called the Maiden... Uh, no, sorry, the Knight of Cups, even though it's called the um, uh, the Maiden of Cups. And so here, Shantiko, the Mother of Flames, would be the Queen of Wands. So there is a rulership principle here. There is a thing of taking the lead. The soul is kind of saying, well, bake it, right? What is Shantiko doing? She's, she's molded loaves of you know, probably corn, and baking it, right? It takes time. You need a fixed temperature to make that work. Will, determination. So interesting. Uh, and with that fixed air that they want, maybe to see it from that higher place so that they can then go from the expansive of Aquarius, the soul is saying, now, focus, what do you want? Focus, what do you want? And remember, there's a completion of emotion here on this side. Work. Let's, uh... Let's look at our exorcist over here. Please take a nice deep breath. So I call upon my gods of air, the sign of Aquarius, powers of the east. My gods, five cards, uh, element spread for the exorcist in this Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, sign happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, soulmate, contract, in process. Uh, what's their element of fire? What they yearn for? What they burn for? What their hearts desire? Please leave that card in my hand. And we got the Ace of Cups. So they want a beginning, an emotional uh, beginning. Certainly that seed of love. I mean, Aphrodite, sweet and flighty, runs around in a see-through nighty. In this case, completely naked. Uh, uh, holding a big cup, man. There's a big cup. But, you know, she's a goddess. <laughs> she can drink out of whoever or whatever she wants. So I get that, right? That makes sense. And for an exorcist, it's a wonderful thing, I would think, to want. What's their element of earth? The fuel to feed the fire and help them manifest their heart's desire, which they already have working for them. The Page of Pentacles. So there is an opportunity here, a physical opportunity to be taken. Now, this is definitely earth element, external, lower three chakras here, the mythic tarot. So we're looking at a physical opportunity. Now, whether this page is giving or receiving, uh, this could be the page incoming, but it does feel like with the ace there and the page of pentacles, which is holding the ace of pentacles, uh, that it feels like it might be the exorcist that busts the move here. Do you see? You feel what I'm saying? Uh, uh, where the detective might still be scoping and probing. What's the element of air here, please, for uh, the exorcist in here? What they're thinking about a page of swords. So two pages, definitely messages and messengers. Uh, definitely this, and I mean, if this is a, a, a shaman and exorcist, uh, someone who really has developed certain, oh God, the words, intuitive skills, uh, certainly the Page of Swords can be a kind of telepathy, a bit of a clairvoyant messages coming in downloads, we tend to call it nowadays. But it can also be that there is some scoping and probing going on this side, too. I'll agree, the Page of Swords can absolutely uh, be about uh, social media stalking and, you know, stuff like that. But definitely uh, the messages they're thinking about. So if this, they haven't busted a move yet, well, in their Earth, they've got the Page of Earth, essentially. And in their air, they've got the Page of Air. They're thinking about it. They're definitely uh, thinking about it. Hmm. but it's lower three chakras. I think they're really thinking about doing it. Uh, 
What's their element of water here then? What are they feeling about this? Three of Wands, they're waiting. They're waiting emotionally, they're waiting, they're biding their time, but they're doing it loyally, right? They've, they're getting their priorities in order. Uh, the arrow is notched on the bow, but they're not letting it fly just yet. I like that. There's a wisdom here uh, for this, and certainly you want a wise exorcist, right? Come to think of it, I do have a, a ham bone and split piece in the house, so to speak. Uh, what is uh, the the card of spirit then? The point of view of the soul who incarnated to play the role uh, as the exorcist in this contract? Four of swords. Absolutely. Four of swords. The soul is saying, pause, meditate heal. There is a timing element here. No major arcana cards on this side. Two on this side. Uh, let's see, we've got fire, we've got earth, we've got air, we've got water. So this, this is balanced out. I like it. I like what I'm seeing here. Uh, let's keep going though. Uh, we've got three more cards down for you guys before I jump over to the extended. We're going to get the Whispers of Love here. Whispers of Love Oracle. The voices of the higher selves for each of them. Uh, uh, which will give you a little bit more insight. And if you haven't felt out who you are here yet, this usually does the trick. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. As I call upon the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, what are the whispers of love for this detective and this exorcist in this Aquarian collective? Sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, soulmate contract in this timeless read for the detective, face down. And for the exorcist, face down. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the detective, have patience. Love is patient and kind. Always. Makes sense. Makes sense, makes sense. No, and it doesn't feel like there's any rush. It doesn't feel like there's any rush here going on. I mean, I know it's a pandemic and all of that. Uh, but if you are together uh, already, you know, and, and you're checking one that you're already in, then certainly there's something up here on this side. Because have patience with the detective if they can kind of do this and be creative about it, be fun about it. You know, good fortune is available here. Um, but they're weighing something out in their mind. They're, that justice card is an interesting thing. This side we've got, be authentic to who you are. Uh, you are asked to be real and true pertaining to who you are and how you feel. I think if there was a conversation to go on between these people, definitely the conversation from this side would be, I love you. Hey, Scubs, I want you. I love you. Let's begin again if we if we have to. I love you. I feel such loyalty for you, but um, I want to take my time with this and have patience. I wonder if this one's like I want it now. The clues are there, right? Again, general reads that could play itself out a lot of ways. So if that didn't help clarify which side you're on, I don't think this is gonna <laughs> gonna clarify except. The Healing Mantra Deck by Matt Kahn isn't a divination system, it is a healing system. So, uh, whatever this is, either side, work the mantra. Here we go. Please take a nice deep breath. As I call upon the Ascended Masters of uh, the Romantic Soulmate Contract reads, please. Just the perfect healing mantra, one real clear mantra message in clarity that this detective and or this exorcist can use to help each other heal, whether they've even met or not, whether they've been together forever, whether it's new, whether there was trouble before and they're coming back together, whatever the situation in this Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, soulmate contract in process, what do you got for them? Unraveling codependency work. Oh my god. 
oh my god, talk about thwack right between the eyes, right? Bet right in the third eye, unraveling codependency. Only I have to feel good about my choices. I love this one. It works. I'm just going to say it works if you work it. Uh, let, let me read it to you from ye old uh, bookie book, Unraveling Codependency. It's not long, but it's powerful. Only I have to feel good about my choices. And as a sidebar, it, you may think it would feel good to burn down the village, but that's not a good feeling choice. That's not what we're talking about. I've had to clarify that with some clients. Uh, no, no matter how bad you want to key their car, don't, right? When codependency unravels, you are able to move freely in the direction of your heart's desire without needing permission from others. Aquarians needing permission from others doesn't make sense to me in any way, shape, or form, but, you know, everybody's got different placements. I'm, uh, I'll leave it at that. As codependency fades, you are able to honor the emotional reactions of others as crucial stages of their healing journey without taking responsibility for them. And we're in a time now where that is a big discussion. Uh, triggering, right? You trigger someone, someone triggers you. The trigger was in place before they came along. It's happening for you, not to you. So when you step on somebody else's hidden landmine, you're actually helping them heal. Like, helping somebody heal sounds pretty, but, you know, it's not all manicure, pedicure, facial massage and a lovely dinner by the fire. No, that's lovely. I want that. I want more of that. Um, but codependence is one of the four ego wounds. Abuse, neglect, codependence, and loss. And everybody's got the wounds of loss. But when you, uh, when you hide your light under a bushel, New Testament reference from the witch, uh, because you, you don't want to upset somebody else, be authentic to who you are and have patience. Have patience with them. It's their trigger. It's their work. Um... Even if you're doing it to each other, that's how you help each other heal. And come on, who is without the wounds of codependence? And if you're not, wow, <laughs> how'd you get that contract? Nice to, ni nice to meet you, so to speak. Um, uh, this mantra is ideal for healing family dynamics, cultivating emotional freedom, which is not the freedom from feeling your emotions, air signs. It means you're free to feel all of them without acting on them. And of course you ask for help in that process, not just this way, this way as well. Um, and reclaiming personal power, because that's what it's about. It's about, relationships are about power dynamics, but to balance them with love and wisdom, that's really the key. Let me put it together. That's the T of the key and the key of the T. Please take a nice deep breath. As I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine to please bless this Aquarian collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus, sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate uh, contract involving this detective and this exorcist that this detective may really grow into their great powers of observation and intuition with their desire to seek out the truth uh, with that Aquarius, what they want to see it from that higher place, see maybe a larger truth they're feeling with their intuition and that Pisces energy inside of them balancing out in a just fair way to allow that center point of the scale to be truth right? But weighing it with their heart. So it's done in a fair, just, and honorable way. And emotionally, they are at the end of a cycle. So they're putting together perhaps those final emotional clues to get that higher picture that they want. And the soul itself is saying, take your time with this. Fixed fire. Get clear on what you want. Get creative, right? There is good fortune here, but have patience in this contract and so that this exorcist can free themselves and others including the detective of destructive impulses because they want that ace of cups they want to drink again whether it's the first time in this lifetime or the third fourth fifth tenth a hundredth time uh, but with that page of pentacles that they have it feels like 
they're the ones that are going to offer the physical opportunity to do so. And with that page of swords, they're keeping their eye most likely on the detective with that element of air taking in messages. But I am getting some clairvoyant, clairaudient stuff in there as well for them. And in that three of wands, what a lovely, solid foundation of fire. They feel the love. They feel the desire, the loyalty, the want to do this. But they are willing to wait and watch what happens in a loyal, honorable way. And with that four of swords from the point of view of the soul to rest, to meditate, to contemplate, and to do the, the healing that's available for them so that the detective can have patience because love is patient and kind always. And so that this exorcist can be uh, authentic to, they are, to who they are because they're being asked to be authentic about who they are, but also about how they feel, which takes vulnerability. And certainly as they unravel codependence in their own energy fields, in their own families, then it's going to be so much easier in this because they are helping each other uh, simultaneously heal, understanding that only they have to feel good about their choices. So that as they help each other heal and unravel codependence for themselves, they are helping everyone on planet Earth do so. And making the happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate thing more available to themselves and everyone on planet Earth who signed up to do it. Because we did sign up to do it. And I know you signed up to do it because you're watching this video. <laughs> so may they be blessed. With all of that and a side of fries, sweet potato, you do you. So uh, for their well-being and really for the well-being of all of life on planet Earth, so motivating. And so it is. I mean, come on. Carl Jung, white courtesy telephone. Unraveling codependence the very psychological read and a very powerful read. So if you liked it, hit like, help the other aquariums find it. You want more of me, subscribe, and certainly there's always uh, Patreon. Uh, dot com backslash drawing the circle. Just go check it out. Link in the description box. But I got, I'm serving good stuff there, and I'm streaming there every morning with coffee. Usually in my bathroom, talking about the lunar astrology for the day. Uh, and sometimes we pull cards too. It's a lot of fun. I love it. So thank you so much for watching. And really, this sounds lovely. Be patient. Be authentic. You know the tea. And uh, usually with aquariums, that's up your alley. I love you all so much. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed of all of this. Hail. Farewell, and blessed, blessed be.